Hi everyone. If you are unfamiliar with what Christ consciousness is, then I would ask you just for a moment to set aside any preconceived ideas you might have concerning Christianity and what the Church has transmitted. Because there is absolutely no link between um, the horrors that have been committed by the Church um, during the, la the last um, 2000 years and what actually is a fully realized Christ. Of course, the Bible was not written by the hand of Yeshua, it was not written by the hand of God. It was written by men um, a couple of decades after the crucifixion. And so, it is only a partial truth, and actually the real truth was transformed in a way that would serve the control for the patriarchy. And, of course, they evicted all these um, very important feminine figures that surrounded Yeshua during his life. And among them, no, there were no prostitutes. Actually, what happened was that at the time the patriarchy would call any woman who worshipped the goddess, which is a very ancient practice, a prostitute. Christ's state is the highest state of enlightenment and mastery there is. It's the highest state of self-realization there is. It's the embodiment of pure divinity, the embodiment of the purest essence of source, while remaining in, in a physical body. Gautama, in his time, um, became the Buddha, so he reached the, this state of Christ, Buddha state. And more recently, 2000 years ago, the man who reached this state was called Yeshua. And that is why Yeshua said, I am the light of the world, because that was truly what he embodied. I grew up in a perfectly atheistic Jewish family. My parents didn't believe in God, my grandparents didn't believe in God. And yet, when I was a little girl, I was very attracted and felt very connected to the Virgin Mary. And so, indirectly, to her son, Yeshua. And I remember when I was at school, I had a couple of friends who were practicing Catholics. And sometimes I, I simply envied them that they were going to church, because I always felt very good in churches. And I would be in really in admiration when I saw this figure of the Virgin Mary and her compassionate look upon me. I could really feel and, and find this security and protection that maybe I couldn't find at home. Three years ago, I was guided by my soul to settle in a region of the south of France that sheltered the Holy Family after the crucifixion and the exile. So, Mary Magdalene, the Holy Family, and occasionally Yeshua um, lived here for a couple of years. Um, here, near the, the Mount of Bugarash. And of course, at the time when I arrived here, I had no idea that the land here carried the, the memory of their passage. This is something that was gradually revealed to me um, with all the information and all this knowledge. And after Mary, I was growing up into a woman, to becoming a woman, and so there, is, there was uh, Mary Magdalene that was calling me. Many months ago, I bought the book called Anna, Grandmother of Jesus, which is the channeled narrative of the life of Anna, the grandmother of Yeshua. So, I had this book next to my bed for almost a year, and I didn't open it. Um, there was something that was almost preventing me from opening it, I can't explain what. And on the 7th of August, so the, the day of the full moon eclipse, someone mentioned this book again to me, and there's something inside me that said, now it is time for you to open it. So that's what I did. I started reading it. And I read five hours in a row, non-stop. As I was reading, I felt this energy um, starting building inside of me that became really, really strong. I felt that this energy was pure light coming into my cells. And at times, I would have tears running through my, my cheeks. At other times, I felt this really powerful, but rather pleasant, bubbling inside me, and it was building, building, and building. So after all these hours of reading, I felt that I needed to put the book aside and take time to meditate, to integrate all this energy that was running through, through me, because it was very powerful. And as I was meditating, I had um, the visit of Anna. and. Um, she talked to me, and she held the space so I could release, so I cried, and I thanked her. 
The next day I resumed reading again, so I had a couple of pages that were left. And again, I felt this incredible energy running through me, this very vibrant energy that I would really feel um, to the heart of my cells, to the heart of my cells. So when I, fin I finished reading the book, I put it aside again and I meditated again. And this time, um, what I felt was that the presence of Yeshua was coming to me. And I really felt this very big light and love that he was emanating. And I never had any problems to open my heart to all these, these um, wonderful um, feminine spiritual figures that are linked to the Divine Mother, such as Mary, Isis or Mary Magdalene. But strangely enough, in the presence of Yeshua, I felt that there was a kind of barrier in my heart, that I was maintaining him at a distance. And that was there to show me um, that it was yeah, probably, for the large part, um, linked to my personal history with my father and the masculine in general. But I also felt that there was a part that was linked to the collective feminine. And the fact that the collective feminine has been so humili humiliated by the, the masculine that was so dominant and violent at, at some times, that um, women have um, sometimes difficulty to open their hearts again and to trust completely the masculine. And I also felt and saw that um, the feminine, the, the women have also used sometimes um, strategies or subterfuges to actually foil the patriarchy. And um, so they have used a bit of a, you know manipulation to get to gain a bit more power, and and that sometimes women uh, would get would get really castrating, like if it was like this subconscious um, desire for revenge. So I felt this presence of Yeshua, and um, he just caressed my aura with his energetic hand, and I really felt his love and the presence that he emanated was that of a father, a brother and a lover all at the same time. So that's when I started to open up myself to him. And so I really felt his energy starting to embrace me completely and he was caressing my hair and that's when I really started to cry <laughs> a lot to release. And he just he was just there, he told me to, to help me to release and to heal this, um, this uh, Divine Masculine inside me. So it was a very powerful experience and a very beautiful experience. So I just surrendered completely into his light and into his love. A couple of days after that experience, I was pretty confused. I had a lot of emotional highs and lows, which is perfectly normal after experiencing a, such a high frequency because anything that vibrates under this frequency actually surfaces and emerges to be cleansed, all this energetic or emotional debris we might have. And I also know that Yeshua didn't present himself to me in his full load, um, full charge of energy, a high frequency energy. Um, otherwise, I think I wouldn't even be here to talk to you right now. What I feel in this particular time frame, so between the 7th of August, the lunar eclipse, and the solar eclipse, the 21st of August, with the line gate in between. It's that there's a huge reactivation of Christ consciousness. There is a uh, really a big influx of these codes of light into our cells, into our DNA, into our consciousness. And so we can really say that, yes, Yeshua is, is back. He is truly back. Although he's not back physically and he won't come back physically, he is back into our hearts, into our consciousness, into ourselves. And we can only feel so much gratitude for all these masters and great initiates that have come 2000 years ago to anchor the light on the planet and to prepare the ground um, for us 2000 years later, you know, because they also did all these um, light grids all around the planet, for us to take the torch now and to start paving the way into this new era this new age that we also call the age of Aquarius or the Golden Age. And we are all Christ and the Christ is awakening inside of us right now. We are bearers of his light. 
that's why Yeshua said, what I have done, you can do it too, and even more. And I think that's one of his most important messages. And also the message that he came to, to tell us um, was not that he was the savior, um, that he sacrificed on the cross for, you know, for all our sins and all that stuff that the church wants us to believe. He is not the savior, he is not the unique expression of God. What he came to tell us is that we are all sons and daughters of God, we are all him, we are all his light. We are all unconditional love, we are all peace, compassion and immortal.